Welcome back to Benny's Custom Works, proudly supported by Valvoline and Sparesbox. Don't forget BCW5 on checkout. This week, something a little bit different. We're down here at Sydney Dragway. We've got the ute. We uh, thought we'd have a bit of a run down here. It's a, it's just a Wednesday night street meet. It's uh, actually a ute themed night tonight, so it'll be interesting to see what else comes out. No doubt there'll be lots of diesel stuff which makes noise and the crankshaft's too high and they're not compliant, but whatever. Um, but that's another story. So we're gonna have a bit of a run tonight and just get a bit of a baseline and see how this thing actually runs now that we've tuned it and done all that sort of good power stuff. We're actually gonna get Maddie from Haltech on the phone a little bit later too and play with a little bit of a launch control, control strategy. I was lying in bed last night and I'm not entirely sure if it's even actually gonna be possible, but I have spoke to Maddie already and he said he's gonna give it a crack pretty much live for us. So. Um, yeah, I've got a, a few little ideas on being able to use the complete standard interior of the car. No extra buttons, no holes, no drilling. So it'll uh, be pretty cool to see if we can pull that off. I'm just about to give Matty from Haltech a buzz. Um, a lot of you guys are probably pretty familiar with Matty's work. He uh, is the crew chief for both the Crestra and the Mustang. You would have just seen him on our uh, Drag Challenge series. He's going to give us a buzz and enable my magical uh, dream sequence to hopefully allow me to have uh, launch control functionality using factory Ford Falcon steering wheel controls through the uh, Elite Pro plug and play using NSP software. So let's get him on the phone. Um, so yeah, Matty, what do you reckon? Yeah, so I reckon um, just because you know, you've got that ECU now on the Nexus software, mm -hmm. um, it allows us to actually go to a generics page, yep. which we have generic channel one, when we activate that, of course, it allows us to make our own channel, uh, which we can give it whatever name. So I'm going to give it uh, the two-step switch. Yep. What this does is now it gives us the option to add some conditions or parameters. The first thing is, of course, the vehicle speed is under 20 k's now. Yeah, which it obviously is would be uh, the cruise control. So uh, what button you want to use, I think we're going to set it as the set accelerate plus button. Yeah, cool. I'll just wander around to the other side of the car and press that. Just yell out when you when you can see it doing. Yep, perfect. So I can see now that that condition is going true. Yep. If you want to do the brake pedal. Brake pedal. Yep, and also the cruise control. Yep, so I can see that. Yeah. And now you can see all three are on. Yep. Uh, and that makes the state. So what we'll do there, we'll just, we've, we've settled this perfect, so we're just going to reboot the ECU. All right, so now now that we've got that generic channel set up, what we're going to do is go into the vehicle functions. Yep. Uh, sorry, the engine functions. And we're going to change the main limiter axes. So yep. right now we've got the cuff method as ignition and soft cut. And then in our end RPM, this is the RPM that the uh, engine limiter is set. Yeah. Uh, we're going to go F3 and add another axis, mm -hmm. and it's already there for us, it's the two-step switch, and then we're going to insert the values of off and on. Yep. And then we'll apply that. What that yeah. will now give us is two areas, so two different when cells. all of those settings conditions have been met it will then jump up to this line so yeah nice what, what do you want to set the uh the two-step limiter to i don't want to go too aggressive because it's a standard converter it's also wednesday night so the prep's not amazing i reckon what 2100 i reckon because at that point it's already starting to make a bit of boost and it's not going to be too aggressive that it'll hit the tire too hard yeah i think i think that's a good base and yeah especially that because it doesn't have a trans brake it is going to push on the brake of so. course yeah you've only got the foot brake to work with but now that we've got that set in any time that all those conditions are met it will of course the ecu will go up to this line yep. and um you know make the limiter what is set in those cells. Yeah, nice. So we actually have, have it over here, you know, showing that 6,500 is the main limiter at the moment. Yeah. So if we did want to check and do all three of those functions, that yeah, would okay. change. All right, give me a sec, I'll go back across. Perfect, 2,100. And then let off the brake. Yep, 6,5. 2,100. 6,5. It's perfect. So it seems that uh, lying in bed pondering things at night can actually have good effects on your 
streetcar development. Pondering our thoughts in bed are definitely always the best ones. Mm. There is obviously other ways you can do this, right? Like you could add a rotary trim module or a switch or any sort of amount of aftermarket componentry, but my idea behind this was that the ECU already sees all these buttons via CAN because the cruise control is controlled via the ECU. It's not a separate cruise control module in this car. Um, and already having those inputs into the ECU, I thought we might be able to adapt uh, their functions. And in this, in this particular case, it's worked pretty well. Um, it's along a similar line to how Scotty made uh, two, two boost maps based on cruise control. Uh, that was also with generic tables and setups from memory. So it's uh, yeah, pretty cool to be able to um, make the most of factory settings and factory switches, uh, even with things like the, the Elite Pro plug and play. So um, yeah, having obviously also adding the, the NSP uh, firmware upgrade to an existing ECU just totally transforms it. So yeah, we've basically opened up even more functionality than what the ECU had in an ESP or an Elite format. Yeah, definitely. Awesome, mate. Well, I might leave you to your uh, evening meals and we'll uh, hopefully not be on the phone later tonight making you try and fix stuff for us, but uh, we'll speak soon and enjoy your evening. Yeah, no, thank you. And um, yeah, you just give that a go and if you want to turn it up, we can change the numbers in there and if you need to turn it down, you can yeah, do the same. Awesome, mate. Well, we'll speak soon. All right, have a good one.
was the slowest 11 I've ever run in my life. 11.9 at 118. Less mile an hour than I would have thought actually, but still, we went 11.9 at 118. 1860 foot, which is pretty good for a rear wheel drive car that's literally on Chinese rear, on Chinese tires. So, pretty happy with that outcome. Far out that felt slow. Well, it's been a bit of a uh, disappointing night in that we got one run. Um, coming down here and burning five hours for one pass is less than enjoyable. Um, to the track's credit, they have spent a lot of time trying to clean up all of the disasters that have unfolded tonight. Um, but sitting in the lanes for five hours is not fun. Um, with that in mind, I'm actually pretty happy with the time, like 11.9 at 118 mile an hour is pretty efficient use of the power. 1.860 foot, considering we're on 20 inch Chinese tires is, in my opinion, a pretty good run. Um, so yeah, the launch control actually worked flawlessly. I did add 200 RPM into the launch control strategy for the second pass, but unfortunately there wasn't a second pass, so there's probably more in it. It'll probably run on 1170 or on 1160 if we can kind of fettle it a bit. Um, but I don't really know if I can be bothered, to be honest. Um, it was pretty enjoyable in that the car works. It's going to drive home. It'll do every single streetcar thing. And the interior is completely untouched. So anyone can jump in. There's not weird buttons or knobs or anything. Um, I was supposed to talk about how fast this went compared to a stock Falcon, but I hadn't looked that up, so give me two seconds. The internet delivers. So according to fasterslaps.com, which I don't know how reliable that source is, a FG XR6 Turbo runs a quarter mile in 13.4 in standard trim. So an 11.9 is pretty good for a street car. All things considered, an 11 second street car is pretty stout. I would consider an 11 second street car quick but still usable if that makes sense. Once you're kind of into that 10 second bracket with a lot of stuff, you're starting to use E85 fuel and stuff gets a bit fiddly whereas that you can literally go to any servo across the country, put in 98 and drive it literally to Melbourne and back in 18 hours. Ask me how I know. Um, but yeah, pretty stoked with the result. Bummed that we didn't get more laps in. Um, but yeah, excited with being able to muck around with all the little features of the NSP as well. Massive thanks as always to you guys, to Gian for standing out in the 20 degree weather and he's still got jumpers and weird stuff on. Um, it's not actually 20 degrees. Massive thanks to Maddie also for his help. Um, he's always keen to try something new and um, yeah, tonight it worked flawlessly. So I'm pretty keen to try and test that out again, but whether we'll come out for another Wednesday night, I'm not sure because if this sort of thing happens where it takes us literally five hours for one run, it's a bit of a bum for us. The video is not as good as it could be for you guys, so we might even try and come out to like a Friday, like the, the licensed motorsport test and tune sort of, sort of deal. But um, yeah, we'll work something out later. But yeah, thanks for watching guys. And we'll see you next time. This is where you take a photo of your supercar and then look at it like that. <laughs>